Nana ne sait pas de deux. J'ai un trouve. Standard de faux. Parata ou la scour, on coûte à Kargasima. Parata ou la scour, on coûte à Kargasima. Takumunda to Capata, but a pat and wait to Katunga, but a tunga tampaika. Smoking kills. It's not only killing you, the smoker, but it's also killing most people that are involved in production of that cigarette that you are smoking. It's killing those people who are handling it in production, and it's killing their hopes, their dreams. So their very dignity is being terminated by this production of the cigarette that ends up on the market in the West. Most cigarettes smoked in France contain tobacco from Malawi, the fifth tobacco producer in the world. 80,000 children are enslaved by worldwide addiction and get intoxicated while working in the fields. <laughs> Shepherd lives with his family in the north of the country, in an area where tobacco is cultivated. During the rainy season, he cuts, picks up and sorts. By his side, his sister Jessie and some of the village kids. They are between 9 and 14 years old. Limon, Shepherd's dad, owns two hectares of plantations. He started growing burly tobaccos thinking he would earn money and get out of corn agriculture. But his dreams quickly turned into a nightmare. I was born in 2009. 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 Tobacco production is long and tedious. It requires three times the workforce than corn, and the earnings are too little to do without child labor. I have a lot of money. I have a lot of money. I have a a so <laughs> We were Sambira Mdoko, you Mlara was Sambira 29. In Malawi, child labor under 14 years old is officially forbidden. But for Shepherd's mother, Josepha, it is the only way to sustain the family. My daughter was born in the family. She was born in the family. She was born in the family. So the tobacco industry definitely here in Malawi, as much as it is contributing to the country, as much as it is a good thing that Malawi has something to export, but for most people that are really involved in the tedious job of producing that, they are really trapped in poverty and they have no way out and it is impoverishing them hugely. <laughs>
The country, one of the poorest in the world, depends mainly on the green gold culture. It represents more than 60% of its exports. The leaders of the companies British American Tobacco, Philip Morris and Japan Tobacco take advantage of this dependence by loaning money to small peasants for fertilizers and pesticides. They encourage them to start growing tobacco. A bag of fertilizer costs around $15, a small fortune for a farmer. Josepha got a loan to buy six of them this year. Doomed to produce tobacco, the family has stopped cultivating corn. Ironically enough, with the money from tobacco, farmers can buy the corn they are no longer planting. Shepherd's family produces near to 1,500 kilos of tobacco, but once they pay the loans back, they are left with $200 a year. Parents, kids and grandparents all live under the same roof, modestly, without water and electricity. But each year, encouraged by the tobacco industry, they believe a better life will be possible. <laughs> the situation is way more difficult for peasants who don't own any land. Tenants of a plot have to sell their harvest to the landlord for little money in exchange for food and accommodation. At the bottom of the production line, farmers like Swafi are the biggest victims of the system. There are six of them sharing these hundred dollars. Even kids of the family are working to make the most of the plot. This system of lease agreement enables production costs to be reduced. On some big farms owned by local elite, the landlords take advantage of their tenants' instability. First of all, there's uh, poor working and living conditions of the tenants. There is uh, some cheating in terms of selling, the landlord buying the, the product from the, from the tenants, which is not regulated. And then there's the sexual abuses in the tenants um, or in the estates. We also have some subtle human trafficking, which means the people, when they're taken from the place or where they live to the estates, normally it's done by night and sometimes with the middlemen who do the, the, the negotiations. The authorities of the country turn a blind eye to the situation for the sake of its economy. But tobacco doesn't only cause socio-economic troubles. The farmers also put their health in jeopardy. Manipulating tobacco with bare hands makes them absorb the equivalent of 50 cigarettes of nicotine a day through their skin. Children with their small bodies are more affected by the green tobacco disease, a poisoning that causes dizziness, nausea, headaches and muscular weakness. Peasants are also exposed to serious neurological problems caused by the use of pesticides and fertilizers, so harmful that some are prohibited from sale in Europe. 
But farmers like Limond have no idea of the risks they are exposed to and of the impact of tobacco on their kids' development. Here, no doctor seems to know about the green tobacco disease. No one is studying the issue in the country. We have to leave Shepherd's Village and drive 150 kilometers south to meet Dr. Chimbeteti. He's working in a private hospital in Kesangu, in the middle of the tobacco plantations. I've been working here almost 15 years. To say the truth, these people are not aware. Because if they were aware, they could have realized that uh, the problem they are getting from the, this type of uh, farming or this type of grading tobacco, uh, like coughing, sneezing, rhinos, headache, uh, and general body pains, they could have realized that this is a, 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 a bad type of crop that we are growing. I think we as a clinicians, it's our time to say this to them. We, there's no way we can keep quiet not telling them the truth. But you know the problem in Malawi, we say tobacco, there's a lot of money. Not knowing in tobacco, of course, there's a lot of money, but there is a lot of too much work to be involved in tobacco. They see something good there, but they are not see the effect of the tobacco. Harmful effects from tobacco culture have an effect at all stages of the production. After harvesting and drying, tobacco leaves must be selected to make packages. Men, women, children of all ages shut themselves in these warehouses without any ventilation for hours a day. The air, filled with tobacco particles, is unbreathable. This young woman has been coming with her baby every day for two weeks. She makes less than 40 euro cents a day. Farmers live, eat and sleep in homes infiltrated with tobacco. Four months a year, families sleep next to the tobacco. Despite the instability of their situation, Josefa tries to send her kids to school, even if it isn't mandatory. Shepherd goes to school every morning. Even if primary school is free, just leaving the crops is already a loss. Most kids miss classes and don't make progress. Teachers see the head counts of their class fluctuating according to the season. So the e number has decreased uh, because of some problems the community is facing. Uh, there are some parents who are sometimes uh, having too much work, more especially on picking tobacco leaves. They can be uh, forced sometimes not to go to school. Sometimes they are facing a shortfall of food that's poor nutrition. As I said, uh, most of the learners do not come here at school in abundance. A third of the country's population is illiterate. In such a context, evolution perspectives are small. Often children are condemned to reproduce their parents' lives. In this life of labor between crops and school, 
There is little space for playing games and being carefree. Malawi has ratified several international conventions. The new president, Joyce Banda, promised to apply the legislation forbidding child labour. But in the fields, nothing has been done yet. Economic stakes are too important and neither the government nor international buyers have an interest in letting this cheap workforce go. There are people who are being seen, of course, making children work. But since there's no clear regulation and no clear fines, everybody just sees it as normal. So nobody has ever been really fined to say that you are making the child work and you are denying the child their, their right to education or you are exposing them to dangerous uh, uh, things in, by your work or your work is hazardous to the children. <laughs> Some NGOs try to fight the phenomenon. This local association came to the north of the country five years ago. Social workers support kids on a daily basis and try to alert the families. They have little means, but the information work is starting to be rewarding. <laughs> Okay. When he heard about the association, King Size, a child from the village, went there alone to ask for help from the social workers. This NGO is rare in the country in that it is not directly sponsored by the tobacco industry. In their ethical charter, every tobacco company condemns child work. To guarantee their good faith and regain prestige, they finance most of the rehabilitation and reschooling programs for the tobacco kids. So there is masquerading around the issue to say that they are doing something, but definitely the issue is real, nothing really is happening. And so to ease their conscience is that why they have this kind of stuff to, to say that we are fighting child labor. And then when uh, they sell their own products and when they buy their own products on the, 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 on the, at the market, the profits that they make, what they give out in corporate social responsibility to these people and to these organizations is nothing at all compared to what they make. And the, what the privation of the future to these children, what is being made, it cannot equal what they put into the money that they put in. More than a few educational programs, it is the whole production system that needs to be made efficient without child labor. Malawi's future needs more crop diversification and its farmers to adapt. Some initiatives like this tea plantation try to open the way towards respecting the employees and the environment. Here, child labor is forbidden. Marita, a young mother from the south, has been working in this plantation of 8,000 hectares for three years. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
inendiko bwino ifuka ama amena ali kukoja anao sa kufunza school ama kokala ba nyumba 3000 laborers work on this fair trade farm Marita picks tea leaves eight hours a day and makes three times as much money as that of a tobacco worker. For these workers, working in a fair trade company is a chance. They all have a five-year contract, a union to defend them, the plantation has its own clinic and its own school, all workers are fed on site. Her kids go to school right near the house, and her husband, also a tea picker, works on the plantation. The company now produces three and a half million kilos of tea per year and sells its production to fair trade brands in Europe. Today it encourages peasants to diversify and to replace tobacco with tea as an income crop. In that way, we can have more factories and the, the community surrounding I mean, see the, the states, they can be selling I mean, see their produce I mean, to, the, to the factory so that you see that product will sustain I mean, see every farmer in the, this part of northern region. But you see, this must have, we see, the government will politically. That's the only way for Malawi to go. For now, the government continues to give priority to the tobacco production to raise the stocks in cash. Over the last three years, the production has brought in around $50 million a year. In Lilongwe, the capital, when the auction ceremony opened, the president, Joyce Banda, reaffirmed her priorities. There is a huge demand for it on the world market. My government will therefore continue to promote the production of food pure tobacco. The event is transmitted on local media. The whole country lives according to the price fluctuations. During four months, bags from all around the country are brought to the place where the auction takes place. Around 180,000 tons of tobacco are produced each year in Malawi. Almost all the production will be bought by its three main buyers. British American Tobacco, Philip Morris and Japan Tobacco. They have three seconds per bag to decide. The marathon along the rows lasts for several hours and more than 8,000 bags can be bought in just one day. The bottom price fixed by the Malawi Tobacco Commission is very low. With the system of tenancy system, the far, little farmers have no uh, say over the pricing of the tobacco. So the companies charge as they want. Our tobacco, of course, as, as the, it goes now on the market, is the to, to be the cheapest because the companies dictate most and the system of production here is cheap labor. Uh, the cheapest labor that they can find in, even in the neighboring uh, countries like Zimbabwe and Zambia. A kilo of Malawi Burley tobacco is sold at 50 cents, three times cheaper than in Zimbabwe. Prices are fixed in dollars, but producers are paid in local money. Powerless, some peasants see their work being sold for almost nothing.
Dejime jima vata gisoni wambili. Fapa ba ne ambili ama kolo ne urani na na kuskuru yanchani. On the other side of the room, farmers who contracted a loan at the beginning of the season are really left out. They have to give their whole harvest to their creditor without auctioning it. A bargain for the buyers who can fix rates even lower. Dejime mwina vata kawuri mwina vata njira ina yake. Kudi bajari marinchu wa zita gose gose. Anti-tobacco campaigns are successful in the Western world, and they threaten Malawi's economy. In three years, profits from tobacco have dropped by 50%. A worrying situation that should encourage the country to diversify its agriculture and ban child labor.